We are going to just go straight to the word. So we'll just send it out a bit. Um, well, I know we've got quite a number of people online. That's fantastic. And uh, I have no problem with no doing church online. Okay, you can't get to church. I want to go to the same place in the United States and want to be a part of it. But I mean, if you've got a local church, you know, I go there. <laughs> you know, I just stay at home and say, you know, go much online. You know, um, it's important. Now, it's not because God doesn't answer our prayers at home. No, that's not the issue. God will answer your prayers and you get us at home. You know, but the Bible says we should not foresee the gathering of ourselves together. That's very important. Okay, and uh, even if it's to gather to pray, yeah, just to get together. We need to get together and to pray so that there can be an end to this pandemic. Yeah, there has to be. And I believe the church has the power. The church has the power. Luke chapter 10, verse 19 says, We have authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the abilities of the enemy. No one should tell me that, oh, this pandemic is a scientific, no, it's a demonic assault. It's not scientific, nothing. it's an assault from hell. Praise the Lord. And I was saying earlier, you know, when you look at the effect that's happened on the church, do you know how many churches are having to close down? Because nobody's going there. And unfortunately, the church can't claim bounce back a little bit. <laughs> so just think about, think about it. Think about all the ministers of the gospel that all of a sudden, you know, yeah, they're preaching online, but <laughs> you know, it's it's not the same. It's not the same. So what if your, your job is not to, to preach on Sunday? What if you know your there's so many other things in the church? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I hope I really trust you uh, to, to take this. This seriously and be prayerful and pray some more. Keep on praying. We need to get rid of this pandemic once and for all. And it's not hard to do so. Praise the Lord. You know, um, today we're going to be talking about the communion and the power of the flesh and the blood of Christ. And you know, the more I study about the communion, and the mysteries of our Lord Jesus Christ, the more I understand the power of the believer. Oh no. As a believer, you are not an ordinary person. No, you're not. You're not an ordinary person. And the devil is scared of the church knowing who they are. Oh, yes, it is. Father, we thank you for the word this evening. We thank you for the Lord's Supper as we go into your words. We just ask the Lord to open our eyes the truth of the word. Holy Spirit, come and take charge. Let, not, let it not be me, but let it be you. And let the words of the minister today not be with the possible words of next wisdom, but rather with the demonstration of the Spirit. And the power in Jesus' name. Amen. So, if you can open with me quickly to first the first Bible, first Corinthians chapter 11. First Corinthians chapter 11. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22. Now, this is actually going to be more like a Bible. Or real by going a deep dive into the Bible this evening. It's going to be a really, really deep dive. So, you know, I need to start to work. Okay, brilliant. So, I really need us to be patient, follow me, 
And of course, when we're done, we're going to have a really nice meal afterwards. Now, first Corinthians, of course, we'll take, take the communion, of course, and then we'll have a nice meal. So, first Corinthians 11 23 says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, I'm reading from the King James Version. He said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had sought to say, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as we hear it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat, this is very important, verse 27. Very, very important. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. I'm sure you guys are thinking, oh, what am I doing here today? <laughs> what am I doing here to keep that patient no. He says, not discerning the Lord's body. He says, for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Other versions say, many die. For if we will judge ourselves, we will not be judged. For when we have to respect the Spirit of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. You know, the Lord began to show me this revelation when I was 17 years old. 17. He began to show me the mystery of the communion. Now, I grew up a Catholic. So, I mean, when the Pope came to Nigeria in 1982, I was an altar boy. Okay, and I really loved it. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, that's why the Lord decided to open this mystery to me. But look at what the Bible said. It says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of water, worthy of this 27, shall be guilty of the body. And the blood of the Lord. Now, this is a letter being written to Christians. That's what it says, but well, let a man, there is a box there, let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. He says, for well, he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning. Not discerning the Lord's body. What does it mean to discern? What does it mean to examine? Those are the two things that we're going to be dealing with here this evening. Because it is the key to the life of power. Look at what the Bible says. It says, for this court, men are weak. So if you want to stop being weak, you need to understand this. Many are sick. If you want to stop being sick, you need to understand this. And many die. This is the key to premature death. Praise God. Think about it. If Paul was writing this, I remember he said the Lord gave this revelation to him. Yeah, that right. Now he's saying that by eating this communion unworthily, 
you now you become weak. You are sick and you stay. It means the corollary is also true. That if you exalt yourself and if you discern the Lord's body, then you will not be weak. You will not be sick. And there will be no reason for you to die on. Now I'm saying this, not just by revelation, but by experience. <laughs> you know, if you watch the last video I said, I've been promoting this program. I shared the story of how I was shot in my dream. And, you know, I overcame death in my dream. Think about it. Now, a lot of people don't take their dreams seriously. Who did? Because Joseph had a dream at 17, and that dream became the purpose of his life. Jacob had a dream, and that dream turned him into a multi millionaire. Because in that dream, the Lord revealed to him how he was going to transfer all the flock, well, not all, but a great number of neighbors to himself. Praise the Lord. So your dreams are not, you know, they're just not, they're not your uh, expressions of restlessness. No, it's like the dreams are important. The dreams are actually a, they're actually, it's actually God opening your eyes into the realm of the spirit. Where all the action takes place. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about that a lot in church. Isn't it? That's where all the action takes place in the spirit. Hebrews 11, verse 6, oh, sorry, verse 3, says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, and the things that are seen were not made from things that appear. In essence, this world we're looking at today was first created. The spirit realm. Amen. So the dreams are important. The dreams are important. And you know, it's Glory to God. When you defeat death, when you are sleeping, then death cannot face you when you are alive. It's not possible. Praise the Lord. You see, before I go into this, I'm going to share a testimony with us, another testimony. Uh, quite a number of you, some of you might know. You know, in 2012, a week before I had that dream that I talked about in the, in the video, now, I was in Nigeria, in Abuja. So I got into Nigeria. This was, I think, in June, the first week in June, as I got into Nigeria, the Holy Spirit says, you fast for three days. So I just went to fast. So that's the way he talks. He just said, like, fast, and that's it. I just go without food, just start praying. So I fasted for three days. I, I was actually going to go for a lot longer, but I was staying in my brother in law's hand. He said he was going to report me to my wife. I didn't eat. So I had to pray after three days. The day, the next day, which was a Friday, I found a good job. Nigeria. And I went to see my spiritual father. Yeah. And then he started the morning, went to his church, and he was preparing for Sunday. Then he said to me, he said, Pastor Paul, let me book your flight. You know, let me just let me pay for the flight back to Lagos. And he called the travel agent. He was going to put me on a flight. Uh, the airline is called Dana Airlines. It's a Nigerian airline. Now, he asked me a question. He said, Pastor, what time is your connecting flight to Accra? Because I was going from Abuja to Lagos to Accra. Now, my connecting flight, the time was 4 p.m. But while we were telling 4 p.m., some fuzzy logic took place in my mind. I said, don't tell me about 4 p.m. Tell me about 5 
But to go tell the story, my dad was a five year. But I was only telling five. But some of this happened. I said, you know what? Don't tell me. I'm going to tell you a whole. It's the last line. It says, I'll be a whole. So I said, well, some of my connecting points are full. <laughs> he had, had his phone on his mouth. He was talking to the agent to put me on the flight. He dropped the phone, said to me, you know what, you won't be able to catch the flight if your connecting flights are full. If I book you this, they are. said, so I'm going to give you the cash to buy your ticket when you get to the airport tomorrow. So I bought the ticket for another airline. And hour before the one was going to put When I landed in Lagos, when I came out of the airport, the plane I was meant to be on, that my spiritual father was going to book me on, was crashing. I literally saw the plane coming down from the sky. Nobody survived. Every single person died. I was meant to be on that part. What's the Bible says? There is a revelation you can have that you become unkillable as a believer. Praise the Lord. There is a revelation. The Bible says that if you discern the Lord's book and you understand the place of examining yourself, the Bible says you will not be weak. You will not be sick. You know what it means to be sick? It's a, it doesn't mean or your body doesn't get sick. <laughs> Do you understand? Being sick is oh my God. <laughs> Whether you are sick or your body is sick, you're just always looking for like a vegetable. I know what I'm My son, when he was in proper school, at a marathon, had a terrible feeling. He said, Just stay at home and we'll cook for you. This is primary school. He said, No. He said, Mommy, the school is depending on me. John told me, He said, I'm going to run. Said, How are you going to run with the way of fear? The way of fear. They came with the come of fear. 16 minutes. 16 minutes. 16. Like, you see, do you understand? I'm trying to break this down. I'm not saying you're not going to have a flu. I said the Bible says you're not going to be sick. Exodus 16, verse 1. Exodus 16, verse 1. Exodus 16, verse 1. The body can be feeling funny. It's okay. It's going to get healed. Because remember, you're not your body. So if your body is out of the flu, your body is going to get better because there's life inside of you. That will heal the body. Amen. But to be sick is a different body. It's a completely different body. Now, he now says, and that's why some of you die. So it means that it's not supposed to be like that. Oh, yes. I know what I'm talking about. It's not supposed to be like that. And so when the doctor diagnosed me with cancer in 2019, I said to him, I have this. I said, really? He said, okay. <laughs> you know, I don't know. The third day, I was looking out from the window. And this was December 2019. And I was looking out the window, and I said, 
<laughs> and I said, Lord, what's going on? And the Lord said, you're not fulfilling your purpose. So I want to bring you home. So what do you mean? So I created to be a preacher. I created to change the world by with this revelation. You're a big business. So Lord, I'm sorry. Now at that time my PSA was 3.47. Now, of course, I was blessed because the doctor said I don't keep up. Well, I had a choice. I had a choice. He said, I don't keep up. Or oh, we can just observe. Yeah. So I said, you know what? I prefer to observe. <laughs> and thank God, like I said that. So this is how So we had the first God supper last year. After the God supper, this day we met. I went to do my PSD. It drops from 3.47 to 2.47. I did another PSA in December. It had gone to 2.41. I did another one. I've done three this year. The last one I did this year was 2.41, something like that. 2.40. 2.10, 2.10, 2.10, 2.10, 2.10, 2.10, 2.10, 2.10, 2.10, 2.10, 2.10, 2.10, 2.10, 2.10, 2.10, 2.10, 2.10, 2.10, 2.
spiritual good ones. You know? And of course, I started copying them as well. I started taking everything. And the difference is there. I come with them on the last time. We took them to hospital. I don't think it's ever happened. John Toby has been to the hospital once in his life. It's when it was three years ago. And that's it. Another lady that's never been to the hospital. Admitted to hospital. Incredible, isn't it? The Bible says if we see and understand clearly the reason for the Lord's body, there's something about the Lord's body. Can someone say there's something about the Lord's body? Can someone say there is something about the Lord's body? You see, let me tell you something. The first time I this brought my attention was, like I said, I would come. I used to go for lessons in the seminary when I was a kid. And I remember Father Francis, he called me, he used to basically, after I finished academic lessons, he then taught me the, you know, the Catholic history of the Catholic Church. And that involved teaching me about all the apostles, what happened to all of them, the history of the church and all that. And there was this thing he was telling me about Apostle John. How John was shown in boiling oil. In Rome, by the then Caesar, who went to kill him. And he thought, you know what? Once I kill this guy, that will be the end of the church. Now, John the Apostle was worshipping while he was in boiling oil. He was worshipping for them. And he was just like worshipping and he was having a great time. And he was in boiling oil. And the whole episode back because when people saw a man in boiling oil, giving glory to God, just basically worshiping, and the number of people that converted to Christianity on that day made the Roman government reconsider what they were doing. And make Christianity the official religion. Because that was a big mistake. And the question I ask is how come John could not die in boiling oil? What happened to him? Now, this is not a parable, by the way, this is history. It was after that episode was. Thank you, the kind of package. Because about, if we can't kill you, I think they can't beat them and throw you somewhere where nobody will see you. <laughs> what did you that incredible package? What made him so unkillable? He understood the mystery. And if you read the whole of the Gospels, he is the only one that wrote in detail about the flesh and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, what is it about the Lord? What's it about? What is it about it? I mean, you can see on your scheme of this already right, that we, we, <laughs> if we had like five hours, we would still not be happy to go through this. But I'm going to just try and summarize this. But I think I'm, I'm giving you guys a taste now. So you guys can go back home after this and do some research. So, first of all, what is it about the body? I'm going to try and run through this very quickly. First of all, 
In Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, as in verse 14, yeah, verse 15, the Lord said to the serpent, He said that the seed of the woman will bruise your head, and you will bruise his head. It was at that point that the, the genealogy of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ began. Praise the Lord. And now when you go to Luke chapter 1, verse 34, I'm going to read that to us. Luke chapter 1, verse 34. You know, people don't understand that this revelation, this revelation is the bedrock of the church. This what I share with you guys tonight. This is the foundation of the church. This is what made the church so powerful. Back in the oh, yes. The church is a joke. Think about it. Think about it. How did the church became, become so powerful that governments submitted to the church? The king of France, the king of Spain, that was appointed to the king of England, submitted to the Roman Catholic Church. Now, who is the Catholic Church? What is the Catholic Church? Think about it's this. So, what the Holy Spirit is trying to do is to revive. Of Praise the Lord. Where believers again begin to manifest divinity. It happened before. <laughs> So now it says, 
I'm not just reading. I want, I want you guys to go back home and study the whole of Hebrews 10. And to study from chapter 8, 9, and 10. But I'm going to just pick up a few verses from there. It says in verse 6, in you know, verse 5, well, when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering, thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared me. Jesus' body was prepared for him. His body is not like yours and mine. His body was prepared for him. It was a body that was sinless. It was a body that was going to become a sacrifice. Hallelujah. And you see, when you understand that, then you begin to understand why Jesus Christ <laughs> is so particular about us discerning his body. Because what he did was a joke. Now, there are times my wife and I will say to the boys, Do you know what we've sacrificed for you guys to have the education for her? <laughs> Do you know what we have sacrificed? Why would we do that? Because we want them to appreciate what we have done. Praise God. That's exactly what we want to see. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he said, You need to see and understand clearly what this whole body of mine is about. So rather than just going into this thing, you don't know what you're doing. It hurts my feelings. But no, he's not really about how to do this. He knows that once you do that, you become susceptible. Things will become weaker. Things will become sick. Things will die. Unnecessary. Praise the Praise the So the body of our Lord is not an ordinary body. It was a sacrifice. His body was given to him for sacrifice. Sacrifice. And that's exactly what he did in his body. He sacrificed. Have you guys ever thought that? So, why would it often read when you get home? Read Hebrews chapter 9. And it will give you an idea, it will give you a good picture of the power of his blood. Okay? And when you read Hebrews chapter 9, it will occur to you that it was his blood that remitted our sins. So without blood, there's no remission of sin. But do you understand that Jesus Christ didn't have to do, go through the journey from Gethsemane to Golgotha just to be his blood? Do you understand that? He didn't have to take that journey just to sacrifice his blood. Jesus Christ did not check in the Shakura at London Bridge, paid like a thousand times, and died there. Yeah, he said it. He said, Is my power to die? <laughs> didn't he say that? He said, I can die, I can die. I can die. I can die. I can die. You will still go to hell. Hello? Are you guys understanding where I'm coming from? You will have still gone to hell. You will have still, you will have still reached out of God. Mary Magdalene would have still tried to go to because they don't know what Because I'm still going to the Father. Now, when you read Hebrews chapter 8 and 9, you will understand what I'm talking about. Because when he went to the Father, he went to sacrifice his blood. 
to clean up the holies of holies. The Bible says the life of the flesh is where? In the blood. So when you, when someone dies, you wonder where did the blood go? Have you noticed that? And when someone dies, give the person like two days. You can't find blood in his body anymore. It's all disappeared. Where is the blood? It's gone. Miraculously. So by Jesus Christ, Mary died. He fulfilled the condition for our salvation. So I'm saying that today, we will we'll never be the same after this place. So what was the, the reason why he took the journey from Gethsemane to Golgotha? Why did he get beaten up? And why did he get his hair pulled out? Why did he get people to spit on him? Why did he get a thorn, a, a, a crown of thorns bullets on his head? Why did he stand up here sorry? Why was he nailed out of the cross? What was that all about? Ladies and gentlemen, that was a process of Jesus Christ sacrificed. So that we can have the eternal life. What is eternal life? Not being weak, not being sickly. And guess what? Weakness is not only physical, weakness is in every area of life. Praise the Lord. When you're strong, Anybody tries to mess up with you, then you have the financial muscle to fight back. Praise the Lord. When you're weak and you're broke, anyone can do anything to you. Back in the days in this country, they come and take your kids. You can't do anything because you're weak. But when you discern the body of our Weakness cannot be used to describe. Can someone say amen to that? When they're talking about weak, your name will not come. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Oh, my God, it's actually what I'm talking about. I begin to ramble. I said that Leave here today. <laughs> what does it mean to examine ourselves? What does it mean to examine? You know, when we see the Bible, we just take the religious explanation. So, what's the read Examine ourselves and simply confess your sins. It doesn't even say that. It says, let a man examine himself. Once you understand the reason for the flesh, the body of Christ, when you understand that Jesus Christ sacrificed his body so that you and I can operate in divinity. Can someone say operate in divinity? John operated in divinity. When he was alive, he, he was in charge of the church in Turkey. It was the bishop, well, it was, it was a pope actually, the whole, the whole of Ephesus. <laughs> yeah, there was someone else who was in charge of Egypt and North Africa, and there was someone from. He was in charge of the whole of the Middle East. Praise God. Yeah. He manifested it. It's a way to understand that as a believer, you are 
are meant to manifest divinity, then you cannot examine yourself. Examining yourself is simply, and it's, it's exactly the answer is in that word, examination. Give yourself a test. Compared to where you are meant to be as a Christian, where are you? That is all. That is all. It's not about you coming to confess. Oh, yesterday night I, I slept too much. God forgive me. I, I hope I watched too much souls. God forgive me for that. God, that's not what it's talking about. Those are manifestations. Of not operating in it. It's an examination. Give yourself a test. What do you score? I don't know what you In God's sake, you're meant to walk in wisdom. Revelation 24, verse 10. Jesus Christ said, Blessed be the Lord who has received for us riches. Wisdom, strength, glory, honor, blessing. When you score, are you operating in divinity? Are you living in the blessing of Abraham? Score yourself. And when Jesus Christ looks at you, does he get excited? Wait, wait, that's my daughter. That's my daughter. Mm. When he looks at you, she's getting better, right? She's getting better. We'll pray for her. We'll pray for her. What is the reaction when God looks at you? It says, Look, my friends, if Lord, you shall see the fruit of the child of your soul in me. And he was satisfied. He wants to look at you. Look at how he's shaking everywhere. Look at how he's standing over the city. Oh my God. Look at how he's in total dominion of his community. Demons, when he wakes up in the morning, he starts screaming. You know that people like that? When they wake up in the morning, they'll say, Oh my God, she's awake again. Oh, oh, oh. we're in trouble today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So that when you wake up in the morning, devils don't care. Do you see what I'm saying? So when the Bible says, Let a man examine himself. Father, Lord, I'm sorry, I lied to my wife yesterday. Lord, I'm sorry, the boys asked for food and I told them, they asked me what was I eating. I said, I, I was eating chips. I, I wasn't eating chips and I told them, well, that's not what he's talking to your life. That's not what you're supposed to do when you're examining yourself. <laughs> examining yourself means how do you measure up? How do you measure up? So this evening, after what you've heard, how do you measure? You see, when you eat the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ and you drink his blood, I'm going to wrap up now. Let's go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. I want to show you exactly why John was able to manifest divinity in the way he did. John chapter 6. I would have read, well, when you get home, read from verse 26. But I'm going to just give you the story. So Jesus Christ had just fed 5,000 people. And, you know, then they were chasing all over the place. So that's what will happen to you when you start manifesting divinity. Everybody will be chasing you. Wherever you go, you will be there. Praise the Lord. When you wake up in the morning, you see people outside your house who want to pray for them. Glory to God. And that's how it's, it's meant to be for all of us as Christians. It's not supposed to be some superpowers, some super pastor, some super no preacher. No, all of us are supposed to be like that. Glory to God. 
We go to school. If you're not in school, everyone is boring. Where is he? Where is she? No, bro. Uh, you understand? They do need to be in school. You know, an ordinary teacher, you're a super teacher. Everybody knows you are the solution provider. And you are, it's so obvious. So Jesus Christ has just fed 5,000. Now, the whole, everybody was chasing him out of the place. So he said to them, he said, they're not chasing me because I want to get work. They're only chasing me because I give you food. <laughs> Jesus Christ is a fan of this man. He just says the way it is. It's like he shoots bull like that. You know, and then they responded to him. The Jews are not there. They, they are also shot shooters. They said, What's the big deal? Our fathers hate money. I mean, so what's the talking about? Most of them are so what is the big deal? And they were supposed to take money. Would you like someone to talk to you like this? I just gave them some money the other day. And you're telling me I'm going to say, What's the big deal? Get me money, so what? What's the big deal? Please. That was the big deal. But then Jesus Christ is so smart. He's so wise. Boom! He took that opportunity to lose his life. And he said, that's it. In verse 35, he says, No, oh, bless the Lord. They said, therefore, unto you, what sign shall I tell them that we may see and believe that we might do the work of the Lord? He said in verse 31, they said to you, Our fathers did these money in this desert, as it is written, to give them bread from heaven. And Jesus Christ said unto them, Very, very nice to you. Moses gave me all that bread from heaven, but my father gave you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is He, He which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. And then He went on and said, We're going to go straight to verse, uh, let me go to verse 40, uh, verse 46. Now it says, Not that any man had seen the Father save you from God, he had seen the Father. Very, very, I saw you. He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. The fathers did eat one in the wilderness and they are dead. But this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that the man may eat thereof and not die. You see that? Did you see that? Well, that is a scripture I quoted in my sleep. When I was shot in my sleep. That's a scripture I quoted when I woke up back to my I am the bread that comes from heaven and a man who eats from it and not die. So nobody here is dying when you are dead. Thank you, Jesus. You, 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 I don't allow it. I, I refuse you to die of any pandemic in the name of Jesus Christ. As we partake of this community, anything to do with death. In your life, I miss you. It's happening to me. I said, so why is it going to happen to you? It's happening to bread and kingdom of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he shall eat forever. And the bread I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Do you see that? You don't need life in heaven. That's guaranteed. But it's on this earth that you need to pray. There will be no devil in heaven going to trample on that foot. The devil is here. Praise the Lord. So the life of this world, in order for you to dominate in this world, he says, I gave you my flesh. Do you understand what I'm talking about now? And you see it all coming together. So when he was taking that journey from Gethsemane to Golgotha, he had eternal life in mind. He had your dominion in mind. So he went into the world of man. If you want to see what Jesus Christ would do for us, you watch this movie, this special. By who was that director of this special? Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. When you watch that movie, then when you take the communion, it will mean something to you. Oh my God. He's dead. Oh my God. Do you know what it means for people to pull your beard? See it off. By the time you go to the 
the cross. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 52, I'm going to look at this cross and close. As we prepare to examine ourselves, Isaiah 52, Isaiah 15, verse 13. Behold, my son shall be given to them. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very happy. As many were astonished at him, his visage was so mad more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. Talking about Jesus Christ on the cross, he was so battered. Nobody could recognize him. You know, as a man. Jesus. People that came later said, Say, dog. Say, man, we dog. People that were crucified before. Remember the two guys that were crucified before? They had been there before. They were there for days. They were there for days. Just chilling, ready, waiting to die. Jesus Christ died. That's what the beating of the end. Oh my God. He sacrificed his flesh for us. And that's why, as we take this communion today, I want you, as we're going to examine ourselves right now, I want you to ask this. Am I manifesting? Am I manifesting Can I say that Jesus is proud of me? Can I honestly say that I am real? No, this is what this evening is like. I knelt, I knelt down and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, Lord, I've messed up so much. I have myself. I said, I am so far from my destination. He said, help me, Lord. I took the communion. Oh, I take the communion as I face two times a day. The Bible says, as often as you eat, I will pray to God. As often as you eat, I will pray to God. And you can eat three times a day. Once before meals or one after meal, it's you can't take it as many times as you want. I examine myself because I know that when I eat the flesh, I drink the blood. Jesus Christ steps. The Bible says in St. John chapter 6. It is he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood and dwells in me and I in him. Do you see that? And do you understand why my body can't carry cancer? <laughs> when the doctor sent me a letter, he said to me, because your case is not urgent. The next check on this next year, the morning I said, wow. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I don't know. They said, my body is, has cast. Is that the way it's supposed to be? It's not just supposed to be that way. Why is my case different? The Bible says, he that eats the flesh and drinks the blood, dwells in the field. And he, in turn, dwells in you. So it's no longer you. It's now him. Praise Do you get? You don't own yourself anymore. <laughs> you have given it all to him. Every time. You're handing over your life to him. You're saying, have your way in me. 
They say, God, occupy this vessel. Say, I am yours. Completely. I no longer own myself. And then Jesus Christ said, the next verse is as the living Father had sent me, and I live by the Father. The he that eats my flesh shall live by me. See that? So really truth. I don't see how until he says, come home. And we're going to have a conversation about that. You probably ask, are you tired? Say, so, yeah, actually I am. I want to come home. Say, so, okay, so, come. No cancer is killing me. Because it's not possible after what you're referring to for you to die by some crisis. Crisis is it's not possible. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ had some views today. He said to Peter, he said, go to the, the water, catch a fish, open its mouth. You find four dinners there. One pay our taxes, like four dollars. So was never struggled financially. I should do it. I should do it. Why should we be struggling financially? Why should we be struggling? I was never confused. So why should you be confused? He's the way about this. So why are you getting depression? Believers are also a little depressed. Depressed for what? I know you some of them are there. Are you sure? Are you, 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 Why? Because as you are eating the flesh tonight and drinking his blood tonight, guess what? He's checking me into your everything. He's going to take up the space that is your life and begin to live through you. How can Jesus be the Do you see where I'm coming from? I'm not talking nonsense, guys. <laughs> no, I'm not talking nonsense. Your story from today will be in him I live. In him I live. In him I have my being. I can't be confessed. Even Stephen, why was this stone? Was not depressed. So what's your story about it? He was being stone. He looked at him and it was like, wow, it's for the glory of God. He was being stone. Oh my God. I love that. Oh, I love it. You know, I love it. I like it. It's nice to die. You know, you die in your body. Like, oh, you know, so they're trying to kill you. You're like, just go, 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 just go. Go, 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 I can be like Paul. After I can be a stone, he got up, 
Pastor, I need to wait till May. <laughs> How was he supposed to keep him up for that? And he just got up again and said, No. What about the Holy Spirit said, No, you must be back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some people will be going, they didn't kill him well. He was properly stoned. <laughs> they would have left him in the world, sure he was dead. Let's examine ourselves. I want to pray the command of God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I want you to spend some time this evening reflect on what we have learned, what we shared this evening. You know, and as we prepare to take the communion. Please let's just bow our heads and think of what we have shared tonight. And if you're watching online, do the same thing with us. Bow your head and think of what we have heard tonight. You are not an ordinary person. If you have been living an ordinary life, examine yourself. Some people will score. 10%. Some people will score 50. Some people will score 60. Some people will score 90%. It's okay. The Bible says, please say, you're not racing against anybody. You're racing only against your own yourself. It's a race of one. So, please, examine yourself today. The Bible says that when you examine yourself, you will not be judged. Can you imagine that? That is that. The devil can never have anything, any hold on you. He can't have any hold. There is nothing he can find to use to afflict you or your family. Praise God. Father, we bless you. Father, we thank you all today. Father, we examine ourselves. Father, we put ourselves on the weight and we compare our lives to the life of our Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Father, Lord, today we say, Lord, have mercy. Hardness. As we prepare to take the communion today, Lord, we are no longer taking the communion without understanding the enormity of the gift of the sacrifice of Christ. Lord, we, as we approach the table tonight, we approach with all gratitude. We are so grateful. We are so grateful, Lord God. Now we understand what Jesus went through for us. Now we understand the, the purpose of the journey from Gethsemane to Golgotha. Now we, we, we now understand the reason for the body of our Lord Jesus. We now understand that that body was sacrificed for us to have eternal to rule and reign on earth and to walk in dominion. Thank you, Lord. We want to pray over this bread today and over this cup. I ask you, Lord, that you make this bread to us the very flesh of our Lord Jesus. Make this cup to us. Now we partake, release upon us eternal life. Release upon us eternal life. Let every weakness perish in our life. Now, if you're online, take bread, take a cup, and join us in this. Join us as we're taking the communion, as I'm praying for the communion right now.
Take out your bread, take out the cup, and join us. Father, I pray that you make this bread to us the flesh of our Lord and this cup make it to us the blood. As we partake, O oh Lord, Father, we make every weakness disappear. Let's Disappear. Father, Lord, anyone that is apportioned to death, let it be reversed in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, let it be miracles, signs, and wonders in the camp of all those who are listening to this message today. Visit us by your Holy Spirit. Visit us by your Son, by your Holy Spirit. Let no life in this place be destroyed. The word says, and when we eat the flesh and we drink the blood, that Jesus Himself will step into our lives and we will step into His life. Don't let that exchange take place tonight in Jesus' name. Jesus Christ said, As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father. Father, as we eat the flesh and drink the blood today, let us live by Jesus. Let our every day be lived as Jesus will have us live. Finally, Jesus Christ said, Your fathers did be murdered in the wilderness of their day. He said, But I am the living bread that comes from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. Not as we partake of this holiness. Everything that is related to death. In our bodies, let them die by the time of Jesus Christ. No one in this place is permitted to be killed by any pandemic. No one in this place is permitted to be killed by any sickness or disease. Take all the glory, Lord, in Jesus Christ. So, are we going to just, you can just go back there, is it? How will they get it? So please, can we just go one after the other and just take the communion at the back? Just take the uh, bread and take the cup and just sit down and then take it at your own time, at your own pace. All of us are good boys. Bless us.
Thank you so much for uh, everything that's happened today. Take all the glory. Just my I think what the testimonies are coming from us. Thank you for bringing us that our people are looking to walk you from today. In Jesus' mighty name. And in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, sorry, that's not something possible. <laughs> and in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forever. In Jesus' name. Now we have service here every Sunday. So 10 a.m., we're going to be back here. So, and we have communion every Sunday. So please, if you if you feel that, come and have a meal with us. You're always welcome. Love you very much. And thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Please, let's fun eating. <laughs> Nobody should be without eating. Please. <laughs> Thank you.